welcome in everybody to the Pony Sports NIL interview series for what is our second interview. And we're very excited to sign and partner with Dallas's own Isaiah Wachovia. Please follow us on Twitter at Pony Sports DTX and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. But without further ado, welcome in Isaiah. Thanks for being our second guest. I appreciate you having me. Hey, awesome, man. Awesome. Real excited. So would you just briefly talk to me about what it means to be able to sign an NIL deal and make money off your name, image, and likeness? Well, I feel like it means a lot to me because, you know, part of me coming to, um, coming to SMU is because I knew it was a, it's, a, uh, it's in Dallas, which is a great city with a big market. So I knew eventually when it, when it happened, the NIL deal things, it started happening. I knew it would be a lot of opportunities for me to, you know, be able to take advantage of that because I'm in such a great city. For sure. And you mentioned that being from Dallas, you had several big power five offers out of high school. What led you to picking SMU? Uh, I just feel like it was home. I wanted to stay home and I love the coaching staff, you know, Coach Sam, Haverty, uh, Dykes, all those guys, they showed me a lot of love. They recruited me really hard. You know, of course, the opportunity to come in to play early as a freshman, you know, and, um, you know, just that opportunity and just being being at home was really the big thing. You know, I wanted to be able to stay home and kind of be be someone that the that the younger generation could look up to. You know what I'm saying? So that was a big thing for me. Yeah, talking about that younger generation, how much does, you know, playing with Dallas on your chest and repping the city mean to D younger DISD players like yourself? Well, you know, I know it means a lot to them. You know, I know that was big for them. You know, you know, we got a couple of recruits in the younger class that, you know, I know personally we played together for a couple of years. So I've been knowing those guys for a while now. And, you know, I feel like just seeing SMU doing real, really good right now in the past, you know, season or two, and then seeing, you know, guys like me and Roger Daniels and JD and guys in this 21 class that we all had, you know, a lot of big offers and we decided to stay home. I feel like we were kind of the starting class that got, you know, the best recruits in Dallas, and we're trying to keep that going for them to stay in Dallas. So I feel like it's going good so far. We got a couple of good recruits in 2022 class. For sure, for sure. Keep that trend of, you know, born and raised and hometown heroes yep. and everybody stay home, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that's awesome. And you were the highest ranked defensive recruit SMU signed in the 2021 class, according to 247 <laughs> Sports, and quickly made a name for yourself working your way into the starting lineup. Um, I know you have two interceptions this year. Do you know you're actually leading the team in interceptions? I mean, nah, it was crazy. You know, catching my first one was probably one of my – already one of my best memories. You know, just, just the team coming around me, you know, being able to celebrate that moment and even the second one too. So, you know, in no way that I see this this coming. You know, I knew I would come in and compete f from day one, but, you know, I couldn't have expected it to, to, to jump off like that. But now I know it's still a lot more work to do, obviously, you know. I still got a lot of work to do to get better, but, you know, that happened. It was just, it was amazing. I can't even lie. So coming in, what did you, what sort of expectations had you set for yourself? Did you think you'd be finding your way into the starting lineup in the first two or three weeks of the season? Uh, you know, coming into the season, you know, I got to, I got to SMU really late because of some things with my high school. So I got to really late, but before I started, you know, I, I kind of made some goals I had for towards the season and, and as I looked at the the goals I had, it basically came down to just going hard every day in practice. And then after that, whatever it is, it is, you know, because I know as long as I do everything I can do, work as hard I can work, sit as much film as I can, do everything I can in my power, then I'll be okay with whatever. But I knew I would come in and compete, like, and learn from those other guys. And that was that was something that I expected of myself, you know, to come in and and, and challenge those guys that they're challenging me every day. So, you know, it's always good to have competition within the group. And I feel like that's why we're doing well because we got so much depth on this team. For certain. And so what would you consider, you said you set some goals for yourself. What would you consider a successful finish to your freshman season? Uh, I mean, obviously I just want to be able to be an impact and help the defense, help the team, you know, be a, uh, be a leader in this freshman class. Um, and just and just go to practice and just get better every day. Like I want to be able to watch watch the game from my first from my first game and watch the game from my last game. And I want to be able to see a, a different in my play and my confidence and my you know play recognition. I just want to be able to see growth throughout the season. That's the biggest goal. Just to, for me to look at the tape and just see if I've grown from the from the first game to the last. That's probably the biggest goal. 
No, that's a, that's a great goal to have. And what would you say the toughest transition from high school ball to college football has been so far? Uh, is that's that's an easy question. It's just the time and how how devoted you have to be not only to to the team but to football. Period. Because in college, it's ten times different. High school, you have way more free time, and it's not nearly as as hard. You know, practice everywhere got to be hundred percent, or you're letting your teammates down, and nobody wants to do that because we all know what we're striving for. You know, so the biggest difference is just you know having a lot more work to do as far as class and, and practices, a lot more film, a lot more, you know, things that I'm doing to try to take care of my body and, and things like that. I feel like I just have to devote a lot more of my time to, you know, to um, school and things like that. I feel like that was the biggest, biggest change. And as far as on the football field, the biggest change is just, you know, of course the game is a lot more physical. Everybody's faster. So it's not like high school, you're already the best athlete on the field. Now you got to really study plays and be able to recognize plays and route combos. So I feel like mentally I have to kind of catch up to speed and, and get used to, you know, watching plays develop and, and knowing what's going to come next or things like that. I feel like that was probably one of the biggest challenges in my first couple of games, just, you know, slowing it down mentally. And do you think you've gotten there over these past few games, really getting to slow down and get into that feel of the game? Oh, yeah. I feel like from my first game to now, it has slowed down a lot for me. But I know – it's still a lot more work I got to do, and I got to get a lot better, you know. I know I'm not satisfied with where I'm at now, but I feel like each game I'm just trying to get a little more comfortable and more comfortable, and I know as long as I do that and I keep watching film and I keep practicing hard, the rest will take care of itself. No doubt, no doubt. That's that's a great mindset to have from there. And, you know, at SMU, the offense really gets a lot of that national attention with, you know, Danny Gray and Reggie and Rashi and Mordecai. Do you think the defense is heading <laughs> that direction as well? Uh, I think it is, you know, because, you know, when you think SMU, you think offense, you know, because obviously we got tremendous receivers, like, and a great quarterback and great running backs, like, in tight ends too, like, O-line, everything. We got a great offense overall. And, you know, but I feel like this year's team um, is we're getting better on defense. I feel like the defense uh, has been doing pretty good, pretty solid, you know, and, and whenever we have some bad plays or we need the offense to make a play, they always step up and make a play. But I feel like um, I'm trying to get it to where well, we're trying to, as a team, we're just trying to get it to where the defense is known for, SMU is known for defense just as well as offense. You know what I mean? And I feel like we're doing that. We're kind of getting better at that because I feel like some games we really play well. I know we still got a lot of proving to do at the same time, though. No doubt. No doubt those Navy game and UNT games stand out as definitely games the defense really came to play there. So mm -hmm. I think SMU fans do definitely notice the the change the defense is making with guys like you in the lineup. but. So, so talk to me about uh, that billboard in Pleasant Grove and what that meant for you uh, to get that billboard. I mean, that, that that meant a lot to me because, you know, my whole thing was, you know, coming to SMU, I just wanted to be, you know, someone that the younger generation could look, look up to and I could come here and be a, a role model. And, and, and so the younger guys, you know, there's a, there's a way you could do it. You could, you could stay home. You don't have to go to the big schools all over the country. You could stay here in Dallas and be be a great player and, and, and still do great things. So I feel like having my billboard in in the city that I'm from, you know, it just it was just pretty cool just to have that there. People could drive by, look at it all the time. I get messages about, man, I just saw your billboard, and it always makes me smile because it's like, you know, I'm really kind of kind of kind of getting there in life, kind of doing things that I want to do. It's, it's all kind of unfolding in front of me. So I feel like that was pretty cool. Yeah, you should tell Coach Sam to stop draining all that attention away from your billboard right now. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I tell you, he needs to, for real. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But so what is just one thing, you know, Mustang fans probably don't know about you? If there was just one thing you'd want to share with them that they probably don't know about you, personality-wise, school-wise, football player-wise, that you'd want to share? Hmm. One thing they don't know. That's a, that's a that's a tough question because I feel like I, I don't know. I, oh, I I say this. I know I'm, I probably don't. I'm not on you know Twitter, uh, social media a lot like that. But in person, you know, I'm a real cool, laid back, funny dude, chill dude. You know, and of course it's always football. But at the same time, I, I like to you know what I'm saying share, relax with my family. I'm a big family guy. That's probably one of the biggest things. I'm a mama's boy. I can't lie. My mom, I love her to death. She <laughs> she's always you know hardest work I know, and that's I feel like that's that's what makes me, you know, go so hard, seeing her work two, three jobs my whole life. That's kind of my biggest motivation. That's what 
pushes me to work and, and, and do what I do. So I feel like that's one thing they probably don't know. It's just my mom. She's just the world to me. And she just, uh, she's the reason why I go hard because I watched her go hard since my entire life, like up until this day. Hey, I always love a good mama shout out. So yeah, excellent. For sure. Excellent. So is there one player you'd say on the team that who's maybe mentored you or taken you under your wing or under their wing? Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, one player on the team, but I feel like the entire safety group, you know, when I came in, you know, those guys, they, uh, some of them had kind of knew a little bit about me from high school. So, you know, they expected me to come in and compete with those guys. And from day one, it was all love. They were teaching me plays, you know, teaching me how to, you know, play recognition and things like that. Guys like Trevor Dembo and Chase and uh, Doug and Rod and my son, you know, all those guys showed me love from day one up until now. And I feel like we're really a family in that group. There's no egos. So I feel like that entire group has kind of mentored me and helped me, you know, in the transition from high school to college, the whole group, and, and especially the coaches and Coach Haverty and Coach uh, Creech. No, that's fantastic. And so I guess just to run through before we wrap up a few quick hitters for you, but what would be, who would you say is the toughest wide receiver on the team to cover? Uh, well, I'm in the slot a lot, so I don't really get to get at Danny and Reggie as much, so it's probably received for sure. You know, I, every day when we go, well, not every day, whenever we get a chance to do one-on-one, I always try to make sure I get at least a rep or two against him because, you know, going against him every day in practice, I feel like if I can guard him, I can guard anybody in the conference. So I always make sure I get rest with him. No, that's that's a great mindset to have. And what running back on the team would you say is the most difficult to tackle, whether it's power, elusiveness, just the whole package? I mean, uh, I feel like we got all three on my side, you know, especially Duke. You know, he's 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 different. You know, he's going he's a different back. But at the same time, Trey and Levine are great backs too. They're all pretty tough. But you know, I feel like Duke, they all have different strengths. You know, Duke's more elusive. You know, Trey and Levine are more you know powerful backs, but they got elusiveness too. So I feel like all three of them are, are, are great backs. No, and who's who would you say is the fastest guy on the team? The fastest guy on the team, ah, that's tough. It's it's a lot of burners. Uh, yeah, a lot of speed. A lot of speed. I'm gonna have to go. I can't give you one name. I got about about three. I can give you. I'm gonna go Danny Reggie or Jalen Record. You know the freshman. He in my class, so I'm gonna root for him. I feel like he gonna be the fastest. I'm so I'm gonna go with my dog in my class. Hey, I like to hear that about Jalen. You got some wheels. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, for sure. He's- He's keeping up with those guys, and I, he might be the name you were going to mention. But the next question would be: Give me the name of one freshman who isn't playing right now that everybody should know about going forward. Who isn't playing right now? We're uh, playing a lot, you know, kind of playing a we're playing, a, playing a lot right now. Uh, you know, Roddy's there; he's playing a lot. So I, I'm gonna say, uh, Polly, Polly Jaylene. I feel like he's going to be special. He's going to be a real special player because he comes to practice, works hard every day. <laughs> Uh, regardless of playing time right now, he's been doing a great job uh, on punt, punt return for us right now. But I know one day in this offense, he's going to be a key a key role in the entire offense just because of how that. hard he works. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, because I think SMU fans know what Rod Daniels is going to be showing. But yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. He's coming up there, so that's, that's great. Well, uh, just a couple more. Who would you say is the hardest hitter on the team? Hardest hitter? Mm. Uh. I'm. A, I think Eli. Elijah Chapman. Elijah no, Chapman. Yeah. I wouldn't want to get hit Eli. by him, man. Nah, mm-hmm. hey, we 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 watch film after the games, and you know I'm at safety, so sometimes I don't always get to see it. But we watch film, and, I, and, and USC plays like, damn, I know that hurt. I know he he don't want to play <laughs> anymore after that hit. So yeah, he, he they got to be the hardest hit on the team right there. No, no question. Who would you say is the biggest jokester on the team? Biggest jokester. Uh, I'm gonna have to go, Duck, my dog, uh, uh, <laughs> Duck. Yeah, he looks like he'd be a blast. Yeah, Duck looks yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final, final one. I'm gonna ask, be asking everybody this question, but who would win in a race between Coach Sam or Coach Steph? Coach Steph, for sure. Coach oh, Steph. Yeah? I don't think, I don't think Sam got the speed no more. I don't know. I don't know. But that'd be a good race. I feel like it'd be real close. It'd be real close. All right, well, Rashi thought Coach Sam would win, so we're going to have to see if ah, tally this See, he on offense. He on offense with them. You know I'm going to ride with the defense. Yeah, you got to ride with the D. I love it, man. Love it. <laughs> well, guys, that's all we have here today with Isaiah. Isaiah, thanks again. 
for tuning in with us. Please tune in over the next few weeks as we continue our NIL interview series. If you didn't check out our first interview with Rashi Rice, go and check it out on Twitter or YouTube. But we're going to be signing off for now so we can get Isaiah his money. Thanks for joining, Isaiah. Thank you.